Obsession. A true story. The unfolding of a very complex process of obsession, with its main roots planted deep in the mysterious soil of past incarnations, with many implications projected into the future of those involved. Hello dear friends and welcome to a new study session of the book Obsession dictated by the spirit Manuel Filomeno de Miranda through the blessed mediumship of Divaldo Franco. Last week we saw how many beautiful blessings the practice of the God at home can bring to a family. We saw that the Santa Marias have begun to renew their hearts to allow the presence of our Master, Christ Jesus, to illuminate every aspect of their lives. We could say that they are now feeling alive for the first time. Isn't it beautiful, dear friends, how the love of Christ literally nourishes so many souls and this very nourishment is available to every one of us you myself and every one of us listening to this program can connect heart to heart with the christ christ also has facebook and whatsapp in a manner of speaking and the only password that we need is the password Heart, H-E-A-R-T. I'm sure all of you can remember the password. And how do we open our hearts to connect to the Christ, our Master? Through prayer. So let us now take a moment to close our eyes, quiet our minds, remind ourselves of our position as immortal spirits incarnated on earth and open ourselves up to develop and nourish this connection with the Master. Dear Master Jesus, we thank you so much for the gift of your love, and we pray at this time that your divine love permeates every fiber of our souls, nourishing our spirits, so that like Esther in this study session, we too can reach our millennial spiritual and developmental goals. Thank you for the blessing of this reincarnation, for the body that we are able to temporarily make use of, for the gift of the faculties of the intellect, and feelings that we carry within our hearts, for the spiritual companions that are part of our network. May all of them be truly and fully blessed by you. Thank you for the gift of those whom we commonly label as obsessors, for they are the teachers that our spirits are in need in order to progress more quickly. So thank you for the gift of their presence and thank you for the gift of everyone whom you have placed in our lives. For we know that we are surrounded by dear souls that we have met with many times. And we thank you for the blessings of this re-encounter under your loving guidance and infinite light. So be it. And speaking of re-encounter, dear friends, let us prepare ourselves to re-encounter with Esther 
her mother, father, and a spiritual team of garden angels or mentors working in supporting them now in the spiritual realm. You may be wondering, how does such encounter take place? Is such encounter possibly available for all of us? Let us listen to the chapter, meditate, and then answer our own questions together as a family. Enjoy! Chapter 15 A Meeting in the Astral Plane Spirits Book, Part 2, Chapter 8 Question 401 Does the soul take rest like the body during sleep? No. A spirit is never inactive. The bonds which unite him to the body are relaxed during sleep, and as the body does not need his presence, he travels through space and enters into more direct relation with other spirits. Now that the family spiritual ties had been strengthened by group prayer, it was possible to help both Esther and the obsessor through the manipulation of magnetic energies. The regular study of the Gospel in the Santa Maria's home created favorable conditions for the development of positive psychic conditions that resulted in a much-needed purification of the mental atmosphere. This forced the undesirable and visible guests out of the house, where they no longer felt comfortable. Taking advantage of the new emotional disposition that had changed the couple's psychosphere, we returned to the house that same evening, when Esther's parents were sound asleep a condition that would make astral projection possible. The Zeta, skilled in such matters, helped them out of the dense vibrations of the physical plane and into the spirit world and then explained to them what they were expected to do. We're about to engage in serious superior commitments, he told the surprised incarnates. Every realization asks for careful planning if we are to succeed. Although we're concentrating our efforts on helping Esther's present personality, we must understand and keep in mind that the sources for disturbance are located in the peri-spirit as a consequence of disastrous experiences in previous incarnations. Her present parents were her partners in past errors, and as such they are, in a way, responsible for her present drama. There is no suffering without a previous cause. We resort to divine protection, of course, but we should not expect to work out miracles, for there are no miracles that would result in the abrogation of divine laws to confer upon us a privilege we do not deserve. Miracles are accomplished through hard work carried on patiently. The fruits will be reaped in due course. But Zara paused for a few moments, as if to weigh his listener's interest. They looked surprised and anxious, but showed intense inner joy and great expectation. Bezerra then resumed his explanation. We plan to take you to visit Esther in the expurgatory cell she's now occupying, but we must renew our mental energies first, since any emotional imbalance will disturb the girl and affect the visiting group. You must consider not only your daughter victim, Bezerra went on, but also the victimized criminal, who is also needing help and protection. He needs love as much as any of us. Our rescue task involves both who suffer and those who cause suffering. Suffering is a blessing and a way to spiritual ascent. It is the service entrance through threshold we cross seeking higher planes of life. To serve is a way to liberate ourselves from past errors. As if to encourage his listeners, Bezerra concluded, We shall be protected by the strength of prayer, and we must keep our minds alert so that the natural contingencies of the service we must render do not find us out of balance. Let us renew our hope and give ourselves up to service. Our young lady will not notice us at first because of her prolonged state of mental disturbance, but she will need some time to readjust her psychic faculties damaged by the long pressure of negative vibrations. The first approach will lead to a better and deeper relationship. The instructor paused. To us, discarnate spirits well used to such tasks, the instructions were quite clear and precise. Esther's parents, however, should only register bits of information. Besides, the sudden shift from their beautiful apartment to the depressing environment of the hospital grounds left them little perception because the entire phenomenon was new to them. 
After the necessary arrangements had been made, magnetic energies were applied to the Santa Marias so that they would recover conscience and sight only after we had arrived at the hospital premises. Bezerra had appointed two spirit nurses to remove all frivolous entities not personally related to the case from the room so that the surroundings could be properly prepared. The two nurses had arrived there a short while before us and had done their job. Nevertheless, when we walked in, we still found a terrible miasma filling the air and a pernicious viscous substance derived from the negative spirit influence lingering about. We made new magnetic arrangements to protect and defend the small room from the perturbed entities who still roamed around, and then placed the parents near their daughter, who slept restlessly. Bezerra said a prayer, which filled us with positive vibrations. The gloomy room gradually began to be filled with the diaphanous light that disintegrated the noxious elements that pervaded it. Bezerra approached Esther and gave her some dispersing passes and dislodged the obsessor, whose mind, on its turn, was controlled by other powerful inferior entities away from the hospital. Suddenly, the ignorant and irascible obsessor found himself bound by magnetic energies manipulated by our instructor. Taken by surprise, he shouted out blasphemies and threatened to destroy the girl in order to take revenge on her father. Bezerra was undisturbed by the scene, equally free from unjustified pity or negative impatience. He absorbed himself in the task of helping Esther out of her physical body to meet her parents in astral projection, wherein she would receive enlightenment on her situation. This meeting would be the first step towards future undertakings. In order to bring Esther into the astral plane, Bezerra worked upon her cerebral and coronal centers from where they flowed disintegrating fluids which had been concentrated and vitalized there since the beginning of the obsessive process. Esther's spirit came out of her physical body as a perfect copy of it, showing the same weakness, the same pitiful appearance, and sloppily dressed in tattered garments. Since she could not adjust her spirit body because of her mental derangement, it reflected the same conditions as her physical body. The reverse is also true. A higher spirit entity, though incarnate in a deformed body, is able to present himself in the spirit world when in astral projection with a harmonious and luminous form because his trained mind can avail himself of the spiritual progress and moral achievements incorporated in his psychosoma. As a result, his spirit form will show beauty, lightness, and perfect balance. As soon as Esther awoke from the hypnotic sleep the obsessor had put her into, she recognized her parents and threw herself into her mother's arms. Tears of joy ran down her face. Colonel Santa Maria, a very anxious man, put his arms around his wife and child, releasing his long-repressed love and pain. It's a dream, mother, explained the girl. It's a heavenly dream, father. God, oh God, do not let me wake. Donna Margarita, having a sharper sensibility, could register the mental influx of Bezerra's powerful mind. Using a telepathic process, our instructor directed the mother to tell her daughter what she needed to know and learn. Yes, my dear, said Donna Margarita. It's a lucky dream in the middle of a long nightmare. A dream that will become a reality when we've atoned for our errors and met our duties. We'll wake up tomorrow, but a fleeting remembrance will still remain in our memories. And like a soothing balm, it will lighten our despair and equip us with courage to face the future. She made a brief pause, as if wondering at the words which flowed easily from her lips without any conscious effort. The anticipated joy of a hopeful future of health and peace soothed her heart, and she proceeded, We have all suffered. Away from you physically, but close to your suffering soul, we grew older, your father and I. Our happiness waned. Our lips stopped smiling, and we approached the borders of impending disaster. But in the most crucial moment, Jesus invited us to renew our we're starting on a new direction now, anticipating future joys. The pride which blinded us, the selfishness which consumed us, the distress that intoxicated us gave way to a humility that liberates, a hope that stirs, and a joy that sings blessings to our souls now retired into themselves in prayer and meditation. We've just started to learn how to love, and the love of God our Father is already bestowing heavenly gifts upon us. We must still drink up our cup of sorrows, of course, but the Lord will
will make us strong enough to dry up the tears and heal the wounds of the one who's causing our ordeal. But why do I suffer so much, Mother? asked Esther. What have I done to be have been torn away from my home like a criminal and then thrown into this odious dungeon? I can't go on. There was an urgent, almost savage plea in her questioning. Her physical body, lying in bed, was covered with cold, sticky sweat. Tears ran down her bruised, dirty face. At the same time, her spirit form was cuddled up in her mother's arms, crying like a frightened child. Donna Margarita understood her daughter's intense suffering, and her courage began to wane. The alert Bezerra restored her spiritual strength with the superior vibrations of his thoughts. The sensitive lady immediately reacted positively, readjusted her mental balance, and answered calmly. Everything that happens to us comes from ourselves. We are the immediate or remote agent of every lucky or unlucky event that affects our lives. The fact that we sometimes do not know the reason for an incident doesn't change its reality. What we ignore now will be clear to us in the future. If we wait patiently, we shall be enlightened in due course. We must learn there's no injustice in God's laws. Everything obeys the law of cause and effect. The evildoer, the lawbreaker, the disturber of natural balance, and the betrayer of love dwell within the victim. So let's not worry about the whys, but let's think about how to act so we can liberate ourselves from pain and adjust ourselves to the divine conscience. The important thing now is to trust God. Esther's spirit was calmed down by the soothing words and the reinvigorating vibrations from our instructor that Donna Margarita was retransmitting to her. Pacified, Esther said, I'm sleepy, mother. I'm tired. You must rest now, dear, answered her mother quietly. Jesus shall bless your sleep. Trust God, my child, and wait. Still guided by Bezerra's mind, the lady added, Everything is all right. Do not despair. Be patient. We shall be happy again. The girl, now sleeping in her spirit form, was carefully removed by two spirit helpers, taken back to her physical body. Colonel Santa Maria had been silent all through the scene, unable to understand the value of the assistance given. He permitted himself to be carried away by his long repressed emotions and let them run loose at last, easing the pressure and weight upon his chest. When he saw Esther's spirit being carried away, he took his wife's hands and, a little confused, kissed them tenderly, trying to put in his gesture what he was unable to put into words. The young girl's physical body, free from the obsessor's mental pressure, rested for the first time in months. The obsessor, unable to attack her now, would certainly resume his sinister persecution later on. But the guidelines of the spiritual recuperation for them had been laid down. The mission fulfilled, they took the Santa Marias back home. Bezerra ended the night's work with a prayer as dawn, still enveloped in the mysteries of the night, struggled to pierce darkness with the pale light of the stars in the enigmatic firmament. What a fascinating account, right, dear friends? Giving us a lot of food for the soul. After this beautiful account by the spirit of Dr. Filomeno de Miranda, we may be asking ourselves, is this encounter in the spiritual realm during sleep time a privilege that only those that are assisted by higher level spirits have? What do you think, dear friends? Being that our Father Mother God is all mercy and all love, there are no privileges amongst any of us, His, Her, Sons and Daughters. That is, God loves us un conditionally. This is why we know for a fact that God loves us as much now as he, she did when he, she created us, and God will continue to love us 
when we are absolutely perfect. So therefore, from this conclusion that is actually part of the Spirit's book, first question of the Spirit's book, what is God? So from this small dissertation which Kardec is responsible for, we can conclude that God treats us, all of us, the same. So therefore, we can affirm that this is a privilege available for all of us. Now we may be asking ourselves, but how do we get there? Well, whether we are aware of it or not, all of us, as we allow our bodies to rest at night, free our spirits temporarily from the ties that connect us so tightly to the spiritual, uh, to the physical body. So all of us are given the opportunity to visit instructors, to visit our garden angels or mentors, to take lessons, classes in the spiritual realm, to have therapeutic moments with loved ones, to watch lectures in the spiritual realm, and so on and so forth. So what we see in this chapter tonight, dear friends, is an example of sleep time being used by the spirit mentors as part of therapeutic sessions with the goal of liberating or freeing Aster from the obsessive process. As you may have noticed, Aster, in the beginning of her encounter, spiritual encounter during physical sleep with her parents, she believes that she is a victim of the circumstances. In other words, she doesn't understand why she's facing such challenges in her life. Although in the present life, she has done absolutely nothing to warrant her current circumstances, Dr. Bezerra de Menezes lovingly clarifies to her, through her own mother, that there are no effects present in our lives without causes. Therefore, what we can't logically explain in this lifetime must have its origins in a past lifetime. So why don't we remember all the information that we need? Because if we did, dear friends, we may be guilt-ridden, we may be trapped by feelings of guilt or remorse that would paralyze us potentially and prevent us from moving forward. So the true spiritist or the true uh, student of spiritism as a philosophy and as a uh, science with moral consequences understands that even if she cannot logically explain the causes of her challenges, those causes must be rooted in a past existence. And this is the case of our dear Esther. So therefore, there is no point in labeling ourselves as victims, because according to the loving guidelines of divine justice, there isn't such a thing. No one is a victim. All we do is reap the actions that we sow. So what could be our attitude if we are facing challenges, since the school of life on earth is meant to bring us challenges so we exercise our spiritual muscles. So what to do when we face challenges, when life calls us to exercise our spiritual muscles? We need and we can, we shall strive together, myself included, to improve our attitude. So when we 
Act like Esther. For example, saying, "Why me? Why did it happen to me? Why does it always happen to me?" Let us exercise our free will and our consciousness in a wise manner. How so? We can simply say, "Okay, this is a challenging situation, but this too shall pass, and I know." Because I study the spiritist philosophy that I am not a victim, that God actually is giving me an opportunity to exercise my spiritual muscles. Is it easy, dear friends? No, not easy at all. But it's an exercise that is very doable. How do we do it? By training our minds with affirmations. So let us practice this week repeating to ourselves mentally I am not a victim God loves me I am a child of God I am not a victim God loves me I am a child of God and God's love is abundant in my life Once again I am not a victim. I am a child of God. God loves me, and God's love is abundant in my life. And let us strive, dear friends, to believe these affirmations because as our master Jesus has said, if we have faith as little as a grain of mustard seed, we shall say to the mountain, Move yourself, and the mountain shall move. So let us work together, dear friends, on our inner mountains, so that we may free ourselves all the more to connect to the heart of our loving Master. And until we meet again for another study session, we will be sending you many, many blessings of serenity and gratitude.